What's up all you vandals? Johnny Alpha here and I'm happy to welcome you back to Graphic Vandalism. Okay, so now I'm here with a new video to take a look at a few books published by Marvel that I find completely underrated to the point I'd even call them criminally underrated. And in my opinion, I would say these books were totally published before their time and I think would actually be really huge hits now. So, with this video, I really hope to bring some interest to them and attempt to show some fans some really awesome and rad books they may have missed out on in the past. Well, alright then, let's just jump right on into it. At number 5, we have a real firecracker of an awesome and fun little book called Daughters of the Dragon, Samurai Bullets, written by Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray, and art by Carl Evans. In this very Quentin Tarantino-esque adventure, Misty Knight and Colleen Wing have taken on a bounty hunter gig. In true Heroes to Hire fashion, they are tasked to round up and bring in a group of D-list supervillain bail jumpers. And when their bounty heads keep getting murdered, Misty and Colleen learn that the men that they are after have pissed off an up-and-coming new supervillain and must try to protect them until said villain makes it personal and shit gets real. I think this book would be perfect for fans of the Marvel Netflix shows, as we are getting to see Misty Knight and Colleen Wing brought to life. This book also has a lot of really awesome cameos from other Marvel characters, and the writing team of Gray and Palmiotti never disappoint me, and with this book, they really create a very awesome exploitation film style narrative, and Carl Evans' art is just amazing in its very fluid motion and very clearly depicted action scenes. Alright, alright, alright. And now with number four, let's take a walk on the more experimental side with Omega the Unknown, written by Jonathan Latham and Carl Rusnick, with art by Farrell Darrenbull. Now, this book reads more like something you'd expect to see from Dark Horse, Image, or Vertigo, but I always actually really love when one of the big two labels will put a book like this out. And the very esoteric story for this book revolves around a mysterious boy named Alexander. He was schooled at home for most of his life, but while being taken to a new school in New York City, him and his family are in a fatal car crash where he learns that the people who are taking care of him are actually robots. He then gets injected into an adventure involving a silent man in a blue superhero costume protecting him, evil robots trying to assassinate him and take over the world with a technovirus, a douchey superhero named the Minx trying to learn all of his little secrets, all while trying to live a normal teenage life. And this book just completely reads like what you'd get if you mixed up the movies Donnie Darko, Napoleon Dynamite, and Birdman. Latham and Rustin create a tale that perfectly invokes teen angst, avant-garde sci-fi, and superhero deconstruction, and Darrenpole brings it all to life beautifully in his very iconic and one-of-a-kind style. And now it's time for a little bit of pulp noir intrigue. So with number three, we're going to take a look at Mystery Men by David Liss and art by Patrick Zercher. And before you ask, no, this book does not have anything to do with the Ben Stiller comedy film of the same name. And the story for this book takes place during the Great Depression and shows us a pulp era Marvel superhero team up of a rich boy debutante vigilante called the Operative, a vaudevillian stagehand who has learned the art of illusion called the Revenant, a doctor whose whole body has been scarred by fire and is hellbent on murderous revenge called the Surgeon, an archaeologist who found an artifact that transforms him into the Greek legend Achilles, and a suffragette obsessed with flying named the Aviatrix. And this team really comes together after a string of horrific events unearths a plot by a group of megalomaniacal occultists planning on jump-starting World War II and bringing us in on the Nazi side. And another really neat thing this book has going for it is its use of actual historical elements like the Lindbergh kidnapping and other Depression-era tragedies. And David List really is an underrated master of noir, and he has a knack for making his type of stories relevant for a modern reader. Zurch's art is just stunning, and really helps make this one of the best looking Marvel Noir comic books ever. Okay, let's keep this moving. Now on to number two, we have S.H.I.E.L.D. Architects of Forever, written by Jonathan Hickman and art by Dustin Weaver. Now this book takes alternative history to new levels, as we learn the secret history of the 616. The story for this book is a time-hopping masterpiece that shows us how the pyramids were built and why ancient civilizations were so advanced. And in this very eye-opening and mind-shattering history lesson, we learn that since the world has started spinning, we have been in danger from celestial malevolence. But Earth has also always had its mighty protectors, including some very prominent historical figures like Leonardo da Vinci and Nikolai Tesla. This book is also really fun for having some Marvel history as well, as we actually learn what happened to Nathaniel Richards and Howard Stark. 
two of the 616's biggest absentee dads. This book is just downright magnificent and proves there is no limits to superhero comics when they are written smart and aim to be bold. Hickman brings his A-game full speed in this book and taps into his image comic style as he just assaults us with a sci-fi historical cacophony that needs to be read to be believed. Now, whatever your feelings are on Hickman's run on Avengers or Secret Wars, just read this book. It is pure magic. And Weaver's art is just beautiful and makes this story as visually brilliant as its writing is. And alright, now it's time to get down and dirty with my number one pick. The Hood, Blood from Stones, written by Brian K. Vaughn, with art by Kyle Hotz. And The Hood's all about this guy named Parker Robbins, who is pretty much down on his luck. Him and his cousin John have kind of resorted to thug life and kind of almost do any kind of job, but they do have their limits. It says that at the beginning of the series, they are approached by a hydra agent looking to hire them, and they just beat the crap out of him while yelling post-9-11 anti-terrorist mottos. And after this, Parker and John go on a job to steal some blood diamonds, but when they get to the place, it's completely empty and looks like some kind of weird cult ritual just happened. Then they are attacked by this crazy demonic creature and Parker shoots it, but being the kind of guy that he is and didn't want to go home empty handed, he steals the demon's cloak and boots. Well, after he puts them on, he finds out that he has superpowers and being the kind of dipshit Parker is, he decides he wants to try his luck at being a supervillain. Well, this doesn't go unnoticed and he gets in trouble with the law and he also ends up earning the attention of people that are actually way more terrifying and evil than he will ever be. This book is also really awesome for its excellent use of lower level Spider-Man villains because the Shocker, Jack-O-Lantern, and Restrictor all get sent after Parker and it's just really funny. The banter and the fights that they have, it, it's good fun. It, really kind of helps make this book just be as stellar as it is. Brian K. Vaughn really just takes this to new levels and I read this book before I actually knew who he was and this really was one of the first examples that I had where I learned that Brian K. Vaughn's name on a book was a stamp of excellence and he just really knocked this one out of the park because he did something that Marvel was trying to do for a while there and that was to make a really gritty anti-hero book. This one sadly went under the radar but I'm really hoping that they could bring it back to what it was. I mean they've done some stuff with the hood here and there but I wish that like Brian K. Vaughn or somebody like him would get back a hold of the character and bring him back to how he is at the end of this book and continue a story from there. And Kyle Potts has always been one of my favorite artists. I actually bought this book because I saw his name on it and he would, did the art for Evil Ernie Destroyer. So that's why I picked this up and I gotta really thank him for that. And I really love his gore and action in this book. I mean, he just delivers it perfectly. Well, Vandals, there you have it. Five completely underrated amazing Marvel books. And I do admit that this is only the tip of the iceberg. I could totally make way more videos on this subject. So if I missed your favorite, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I could totally planning on doing more of these. So if I get some really awesome recommendations, um, we'll see what happens. All right, cool. This is Johnny Alpha from Graphic Vandalism saying keep your ear to the grindstone and always be on the lookout for underrated greatness.